Hello everyone, today we will discuss concurrent collections. As we know we already have standard collections, then why do we need another set of collections? To understand this, let's take an example. Suppose we have a hash map which is storing a key value pair. In a non-concurrent environment, when we know that this map will only be accessed by a single thread for reading or updating its content, there we do not have any issue. Everyone is happy and threads are reading and updating the map as required without any conflicts. Now we know in the current times when we have multiple CPU cores available to use, then having a non-concurrent application is big waste of resources because we only one thread will be executing all the time. So having a multi-threaded application is not an option now but a necessity if we want to efficiently use our resources. We can make the standard hash map also work in multi-threaded environment by using a utility class provided by Java. We have a utility class collections which contains many utility methods for collection framework. Out of all those methods we have synchronized map method which can be invoked on hash map that will make it suitable for concurrent environments also. Similar to this we have synchronized list, synchronized set and many more other methods available for different collections. So after using this technique to make hash map synchronized, we need to make sure that any operation on that hash map should be done inside a synchronized block. But do you think that this is an optimal solution? Well, no. Let's see why. When a hash map is synchronized using this technique and multiple threads try to perform some operation on the hash map, at that time only single thread will be allowed. All other threads have to wait. Concurrent hash map provide an optimal solution for this problem. It is a hash map just like the standard version and used to store key and value pairs which work on top of hash table itself. So everything else is same as hash map with just one difference. It allows concurrent access to the map. So how does it do that? The map is actually divided into multiple parts which are known as segments. It handles read and write operations differently. Like any number of threads can read the data without needing any lock on any of the segments. But when a thread tries to update some data inside a particular segment, then that segment will be locked for all other threads. That means no thread will be able to read or write data present inside that logged segment. During this time, all other segments of the map are available for other threads to perform the operations. So in this way, Concurrent hash map allows multiple threads to access map object at the same time. While creating an object of concurrent hash map, we can provide the configurations like we can do in hash map for load factor, initial capacity, and additionally, we can also provide concurrency level. Let us understand all these three configurations. First is initial capacity. This will tell the JVM to create map of the mentioned size in the beginning and resizing will be done later when more elements are getting added. Then we have load factor. It acts as a threshold or a limit which is used to control the resizing of the map. Resizing of map does not happen when it is completely full. It does happen when the allocated storage is used up to a certain limit. For example, if we provide 0.5 as a load factor during the creation, then as soon as half of the storage is allocated or is used, then the resizing will trigger. The new size of the hash table is typically chosen to be larger than the current size. Often it is double. Now coming to the last configuration, which is concurrency level. This is only applicable for concurrent hash map and not for the standard hash map. This represents the number of concurrent write operations which can happen on the map object. Based on this value, internal sizing will happen. And on top of all these things, you don't need to learn concurrent hash map differently. If you know how to use the simple hash map, then you know how to use concurrent hash map also. Now let me show you a very simple example of how to use the concurrent hash map and that will be same as using the standard hash map. So this is our demo example. In the main method, we are first creating object of concurrent hash map, which can store a key of type string and value of type integer. 
and similar to the standard hash map we are using dot put method to add the entries inside this concurrent hash map object also and after that we are just printing the complete hash map and if we see we can update the value similar to the hash map also so similar to the standard hash map we can update any value associated to any key present in that particular map so here you can see what we are doing we are adding 10 to the current value of key b and after that again we are printing the complete hash map now let me execute this program and we can see the output so here we can see in the beginning the output is a1 b2 and c3 and after updating b's value we are able to see that b's value has been updated to 12. Concurrent hash map is particularly useful in the scenarios where you have multiple threads concurrently accessing or modifying a map. And this code makes it thread safe, so you do not have to worry about any conflicts in case of multiple threads accessing and updating the map object. Unlike traditional hash map implementations, concurrent hash map provides a high level of concurrency without the need of external synchronization. You can see we are not using any synchronization or explicit locking to handle the multiple threads accessing this shared resource. Now here are some real world use cases where concurrent hash map is beneficial. First we have already seen multi-threaded read and write operations. Then it can be used for the caching and it can also be used for the parallel stream processing. It's important to note that while concurrent hash map is designed for high concurrency, it may not be the best choice for all the scenarios. If your use case involves more reads than writes and you can tolerate some level of inconsistency, other options like unmodifiable map or immutable map may be a better option. Understanding the specific requirement of your application is crucial in choosing the appropriate data structure. So that was it for a concurrent hash map. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. In the next videos, we will try to cover some more interesting topics from Java multithreading. Till then, thanks for watching. Happy coding.